Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening, happening here in the city of Missoula, Missoula County, the state, and beyond. I got a lot of things to talk about, so I'm going to kick things off with a little bit of weather happening today, because there is a flood advisory warning. Not like that's anything new for our community, but it's happening pretty much today and tonight, and it'll probably end up some uh, end sometime around Saturday morning. Uh, but of, of course, you'd expect um, flood advisory warnings um, from now until Saturday. Um, you have that 20% chances of rain. It's going to be partly cloudy. Still, we had a lot of rain the other day around 3.30 in the afternoon, um, but expect maybe some of those kind of showers popping in and around throughout this uh, Friday, Saturday. And then Sunday is going to be mostly sunny, enough to enjoy the uh, Montana Maid Fair, which will be starting at Karis Park on Sunday from 10 a.m. to about 4 p.m. And I'll have more information about that later on in my show when I talk about events at the end of my show. But we'll kick things off with a little bit of news. Of course, hundreds of Missoulians gathered Wednesday um, Wednesday evening in front of the Missoula County Detention Center to, to protest an executive order that Trump signed on Wednesday. The order does not and the new zero tolerance policy, but instead keeps detained families together and ex, uh, expedites criminal um, immigration cases. Many organizations and people who come from migrant statuses spoke on immigration custom enforcement, otherwise known as ICE, and the U.S. Border Patrol that have arrested at least 16 people in Montana since Sessions announced the zero tolerance policy. Nine of those people, most of them from Mexico, are facing federal felony crimes related to being in the country, with court records saying seven of them were previously deported and came back to the United States illegally. The other two had no legal documentation to be in the the country. Uh, one of the illegals, uh, Roberto Cruz, is being held at one of the Montana prisons waiting for criminal prosecutions. Um, his daughter came to the rally to uh, speak on behalf of immigration. Uh, several members of the local religious groups spoke, including St. Francis Xavier Osteosia pastor uh, Matt Holland, who called the U.S.-Mexican border an arbitrary line and blasted Sessions' use of Bible verses to defend the new policy. The full rally is on um, MCAT's Facebook page. Just look up Missoula's Community Media Resource for more information. In the state news, uh, a couple Chinook uh, helicopters uh, flew over 100 uh, kids and uh, staff members from a Bible camp um, from Helena to Great Falls when flood waters got too severe and washed away uh, the trails to the place. So the Montana National Guard and the U.S. Air Force assisted Lewis and Clark search and, vacu and rescue in evacuating 100 students, 37 staff from the Wilderness Bible School northwest of Helena that are trapped due to washed out roads. Uh, recent rains caused flooding in the Dearborn River, washing out several areas of the road, including two of the schools located near river and the Forest Service boundary. County officials said uh, Thursday morning that the National Guard uh, flew the Chinook helicopters and started transporting at 10 a.m., um, but of course, the students were flown to Great Falls. Federal, state, um, and county officials continue to deal with the floods caused by the several inches of rain in the last few days that swelled the rivers in creeks, closed roads, and washed out bridges. Uh, Fish, Wildlife, and Park announced that the closures of the following sites, uh, Willow Creek Reservoir on the Rocky Mountain Front west of Augusta, Big Bend on the Missouri River south of Great Falls, Cottonwood Grove on the Missouri River south of Great Falls, Ulm Bridge um, near Great Falls, uh, tr uh, Truly Bridge, um, and this is near the Smith River, and near this, and finally near the Sun River near Vaughn, uh, Largent's Bend uh, have all been closed due to flooding. Of course, you can find out the full story and more by going to the Helena Independent Record, um, otherwise known as HelenaIR.com. Um, in national news, uh, with, of course, um, continuing on more of the president's uh, reversed uh, his policy of separating children and parents with across the border illegally, Vice President Pence said that we believe that this is a false choice between whether we are a country of law and order, a country with borders, and a country that dis uh, um, demonstrates the compassion and the heart of Ameri that American people and um, respect for families. With an executive order signed in order to keep families together, many Democrats think that this is an underlying issue is criminalizing immigrants crossing the border, which when convicted would separate the children from their parents on a more um, long-term sense. Um, Protests uh, beyond Missoula have actually happened across the United States, uh, th which uh, um, 
basically had a temporary closure in Portland's own um, Immigration Custom Enforcement offices. Their protests against President Trump's immigration policies began Sunday and by midweek had ballooned thick with uh, disgruntled residents, uh, toting signs, sleeping in tents, and rallying crowds with PA systems. Eventually, ICE announced that the situation had become un, uh, unattain, uh, untenable. Um, so they had to close their offices for a while. Of course, the offices remain closed on Thursday, announcing that the closure will be note that the protesters are hurting the migrants they're advocating for by delaying necessary sessions, including to inform ICE detainees of U.S. immigration law. Trump and others are vowing a zero tolerance policy with immigration, but I said they would not separate families as soon as they are being processed through ICE. So that's kind of what's happening in and around the news. Uh, I got a couple new programs going to be airing on MCAT. And then when I come back, I'll have everything that you need to know about what's happening in the city of Missoula. my career with MLSA as an AmeriCorps legal fellow with the Indian Wills Project, which we had for a couple of years, and it was awesome. It was created uh, as a result of APRA, and our organization realized that there was a need for these wills because of APRA and because no one knew how to do them and people were afraid to learn how to do them. And they're, they, they viewed the law as complicated and, um, and other various reasons. You know, here in Montana, a lot of the tribal communities are in remote areas where there are not a lot of attorneys. And even if there are attorneys close by, they charge a lot of money to travel to the reservation and to do these wills. Um, but from my, pers from my legal aid perspective, you know, the out of all the wills that I've done now over this past decade, uh, you know, we, we are there to serve low-income clients for free. People in Helena or Great Falls can't talk about ponies, really. They had boats over there. We had ponies over here. So it's, it's a whole different logistic. It's a whole different kind of trip, and I think that's why it's important we talk about it. I've ground-proofed or driven every step of that way from Horse Prairie to Weeite Prairie. I've even climbed up on Windover Ridge, straight up Windover Ridge, much to the chagrin of my, my wife, who is with me. It's, if you ever walked Windover Ridge, you don't want to do it twice on the same day. <laughs> but again, it all happened here. So here we are, and uh, let's get started with ponies and, and passes. That was a really difficult experience for me. I was 43 years old. Uh, I thought I'd have my mom forever. She died from cancer, and it really, re I really took it hard. And the reason I'm telling you, it'll make more sense later on down. Um, but uh, in that process, I, I had no heart. How many of you have lost somebody and then you had no heart to do the work you do? Raise your hand. I was there and I, I just couldn't do the work Indian Health Service had lined out for me. And it was, a, it was a, a job that my mother really wanted me to do and wanted me to be there. And I just, when she died, I just didn't have the heart. And I went to the, ch the chairman at Crow and I said, it was Cedric Black Eagle. And I said, hey, Cedric, I'd like to come work for the tribe. Is that possible? I'm a Commission Corps officer. And he said, I'll work on it. And we'll be
Hey guys, welcome back. It is Friday, and a bunch of new movies are coming out this weekend. And why not kick things off with a little bit of crap that is happening this weekend? So we're kicking off with Pre-Critic. Um, hey, you know, it's the fifth installment of a franchise that's kind of like, hey, if they keep on making money, why not keep making movies? So here we go again with another island of dinosaurs and humans trying to control nature. Um, the original tagline was 65 million years in the making, but that's when this movie was good. But as sequels tend to squeeze fans to the point of mediocrity, we get another movie with dinosaurs. Of course, if you actually saw the trailer to this movie, it basically gives you the whole entire plot uh, right out uh, forthright. Um, how many times must you rehash the same plot before you realize that they, um, I'm talking about the Hollywood they, care more about putting butts in seats than the actual story? Up next, we get a documentary. Yes, a documentary. If you want to spend about an hour, um, 40, hour, 50 minutes uh, learning about Elvis's history, about how he came from humble beginnings to uh, basically... Um, Graceland, dying on the toilet kind of deal. So that's the movie for you. Uh, kind of tells the story about this. Uh, of course, uh, most recently, uh, DJ Fontana just died. Um, he was Elvis's drummer who uh, was who kind of helped start uh, the whole kind of uh, rock and roll movement. Um, if you want to learn more about that, you can look up DJ Fontana, but I heard that his history is pretty interesting about how Elvis um, was insistent on letting the drums take a big part in music in the future as well, rather than just keeping rhythm. Um, up next, we got another uh, movie. It's a Western movie. Um, so you you know exactly what, kind of what to expect from any Western movies where you basically have a group of people traveling around doing stuff. But this one was with Robert Pattinson is in a Western circuit in the 1870s about a man and a woman. Otherwise, the title Damsel would, would have a whole different meaning. Basically, this movie starts out as a traveling Western movie, as they do, and it quickly becomes a nightmare of sorts to get the damsel, which always happens. For those of you who don't remember, uh, Robert Pattinson was in the Twilight franchise movies and has seen actually some relative success in the kind of indie world. And I can see that uh, Westerns are kind of like the, uh, um, the point where they're kind of uh, just before, just I, I don't know, on the scale of like indie to Hollywood blockbuster, I would say that westerns are just above indie. So those are the kind of movies that you guys can expect this weekend. Hey, go see the dinosaur movie. Who cares? <laughs> but if you do care um, and learn, want to learn more about uh, MCAT and more of our wonderful programs, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice for me to write it out twice. You can see all the wonderful programs that are going to be airing on MCAT and more. You can also uh, go to videos to see past interviews and past segments um, that, are, that are aired on the show as well. But of course, if you go to MCAT.org, Make sure to like us on Facebook. Um, you can learn more about everything, uh, what's going on in the city of Missoula um, in terms of media, because MCAT documents everything that happens in the city of Missoula through the college um, lecture series, a bunch of rallies like we just did on Wednesday for the uh, immigrant justice rally and uh, more. And you can find out all those programs and more by going to MCAT.org. But I have... Uh, summer series video for you guys. Flagship Friday um, is pretty much over and uh, I'm going to be showing a bunch of videos made by uh, our summer camp kids, but summer camp start next week. So I have a little highlight video from last year's animation camp of some of the, uh, some of the highlights of the videos of some of the kids have done. So here is summer series uh, highlights from animation camp one from 2017. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about the city of Missoula promise this time right after this.
talk to Cube, and I've seen your reports. If you don't stop this bacon diet, you will die in a week. And those are some of the short films you can expect for our big live show that happens at the end of our summer camp week next week, next Friday at 4.30 p.m. And I'll talk a little bit more about it when I uh, when we get there uh, next week for my next morning shows and stuff. All right. Let's talk about some city council stuff. Um, in the very first city council meeting, I've got public safety and health. And this is very interesting because this is an emergency response planning incident command structure and communication associated with recent flooding events, which basically means what uh, emergency services do uh, preemptively, how they work with other organizations and how they uh, essentially pay for all the services that they provide in, in case of any emergencies coming up here. So. Adrian Beck, Office of Emergency Management, talks about the likelihood of environmental disasters in Missoula. So let's kick things off with her. In 2017, we had a reassessment of our pre-disaster mitigation plan uh, that essentially profiles the, the things that we're likely to face just based on where we sit in the world. Uh, there are no surprises in that pre-disaster mitigation plan. You can probably, all of you, guess what our top three hazards are. Um, so wildfire flooding and uh, hazardous material spills are our top three, uh, followed closely by severe weather. Um, so just in, just in my short tenure uh, within emergency management, we certainly have seen fires that are very significant. We're, we just have come through a very significant and actually are still experiencing a very significant flooding season. We've seen effects from uh, severe weather and the avalanche that occurred on Mount Jumbo, um, as well as we've seen several small Fortunately, not large um, hazardous material spills um, that have necessitated a, a multi-day response. All right, so that's kind of like a uh, kind of like an overview of about like, some of the situations that happen in the state of Montana and more. Um, as uh, funding becomes available, also determines where the list of emergency response can look into future prevention uh, measures, state funding or local funding. And uh, from what I've seen in the past, funds that, of course, um, in um, like your fire crews and your local fire departments, about 90% of the money that goes into your fire department usually goes to retirement and pensions. And and while 10% usually goes to uh, the current employees and the equipment updates that they need to get, and they usually go to the county and the city to ask for any additional money for any equipment they may need in the future as well. But of course, there's also more than that. Um, and as Adrian uh, Beck talks about um, about when the city can call for a state emergency, um, in, especially in terms of funding in case that um, the county is unable to pay for it. Typically, um to, to activate the emergency operations plan, you, you as a city council or the mayor specifically or the county commissioners will declare an emergency. And, and my job is to, help, is to help guide and advise as to when declaring an emergency is appropriate. And we typically will declare an emergency or will recommend that an emergency be declared when we have good intel that an emergency is about to occur or is likely to occur or is currently occurring. Um, and so it's very common uh, in any given year that we will have at least one emergency declaration uh, issued across the county. And All right. So um um, of course, right now, the emergency that was declared more recently is the flooding in the um, city of Missoula with the high waters and high rains over amount of, uh, of sides like that. Uh, of course, most of the way is to actually, um, by calling these states of emergencies, is to actually help uh, get money and funding for these emergencies, like provided the sandbags to a lot of the people who are dealing with the flooding, especially in the Orchard Homes area, and getting organizations to come down to help in terms of emergency situations, providing shelter for people who have to evacuate their homes. Um, kind of like when the, uh, basically when the hotshot crews have to tell local officials that the fire is spreading and that they uh, can't contain a certain amount of area, like they have a certain percentage contained, and it might be getting kind of a little out of hand. Um, the hot shots job isn't to basically evacuate people. Their job is to fight the fire. So when they give the reports to the people, they can have the management people call the right people to help evacuate um, um, buildings if need be. So basically, Adrian talks about how emergency services can get state funding and outside help for any future um, 
emergencies that are occurring and may occur in the future. When, when, when a local jurisdiction becomes, um, has expended all of their available resources, they have the opportunity to ask the state for assistance. So it, essentially, before you can ask the state for any kind of state-owned resources, financial or, or real resources, such as the National Guard, you have to have demonstrated that you do not have that capability within your, within your jurisdiction. And it's important also to recognize that, that ordering the National Guard can only be done through very specific channels, through my office, through the mayor, or through the commissioners. The National Guard um, will come in to perform a very specific mission uh, that has been identified as a gap in, in, our, um, in our jurisdiction. But it's important to recognize that the Guard is not a free resource, that there is still a, a cost associated with ordering the Guard any time that they show up. Um, and, and again, it's, it's the county has expended our, or the city has expended our uh, capable resources. The state will come in and bring you additional resources. When the state has determined that they cannot find those resources or that they have tapped out, then that's when they can go and ask for federal assistance. And so that's kind of the stepping stone of how you get to a federal disaster declaration, is that the county gets expended, the state gets expended, and then they, they ask for assistance from, from the federal government. And especially with a lot of times um, in terms of a lot of the fire seasons and whatnot like that, when a certain um, expenditures have reached a certain level past um, a certain amount of money, a lot of times um, grants and funds are asked upon the state level and then beyond to the federal level to help uh, offset the costs that go into um, hiring uh, fire crews and hot shots to perform their actions as well. So a lot of times they can get, uh, they basically a lot of times they collect a lot of the receipts and how much they paid their employees. And if they do go into the black, which a lot of times they, a lot of or, uh, um, counties do before they get state assistance. And then the state kind of helps give them back to the balance. And of course, this last fire season kind of proved that uh, the funding in itself was a big hassle and it's right. And also uh, we, to the point of a federal emergency because the state kind of went beyond the resources in fighting the fires this season. Um, so basically, I'm going to kind of end it there for the public safety and health. Um, that is just an update, and it kind of gives you more information. I learned a lot from this particular meeting, and you can too by going onto the City of Missoula's website. Just real quick, ci.missoula.mt.us. You can also look up City of Missoula on the Google, as people like to call it. And <laughs> But yeah, just learn more information. This is actually a really good meeting. Um, um, but this next meeting that I got coming up now is they're talking about tearing down historic buildings and how you can go about doing that. Uh, so basically, they will talk about the existing ordinance regarding demolition of historic resources that does not provide sufficient application requirements for the Historic Preservation Commission to adequately review for economic hardships and is getting generally a broad nature. Uh, the proposed amendment addresses the need for a clear and more refined process for review. This is a long meeting, but I'm going to kind of give you the cliff notes for this meeting as well. Emily, Emmy Shearer, Historic Preservation Officer for the city, talks about uh, what will initially change in this updated ordinance, which is basically amend section 20.85.0406. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, quite a, it's quite a it's quite a mouthful, and there's a lot of information, but I'm just going to give you the brief. So here's what she had to say. We have only ever had to use our existing language once, and it did prove messy, unclear, and challenging. So we're just trying to clarify, update um, from what we learned. We're uh, not rewriting the book in any way. We're actually using the existing language and just expanding on that. Um, so with revisions for clarity, which includes subsections, increased timeline, more detailed requirements for assessing economic feasibility, consultation, and mitigation. And then finally, a clause that the final demolition and building permit will be granted only after um, the final building permit has been submitted to the city, so a redevelopment plan will be required as well. All right, so, okay, here's the thing. They want to, I want to explain this as simply as possible, but it's not that simple. Um, for any person who wants to buy a building that has historical properties in the city of Missoula, there's a lot of historic buildings in the city of Missoula. Of course, the Merck was a big, uh, big hot topic issue that got to the point um, um, and a lot of times, like me trying to explain it, it doesn't really give it much justice. So here's the here's the here's the really short end of it. Um, if you wish to demolish any historic buildings in the city of Missoula, um, you must provide uh, basically a clear sample of what you can do to restore it 
and how it's completely impossible that you can restore it. Therefore, you'd have to tear down and build something else. So basically, you have to not only uh, come up with a plan, but you have to come up with a, a secondary plan of uh, basically restoring the building. But one of the people, um, Sam Sill, uh, uh, who is a who is representing the Missoula Organization of Realtors, he talks about the private property rights, um, and he talks about uh, from the perspective of the of commercial business owner who buys the building. Um, you know, we understand and support the city's goals around uh, preserving historic resources, and obviously, I think in any locality where you attempt to get a permit to um, demolish or relocate one of these resources, it's, it's going to cost some money and take some time more than normal you know, development uh, processes look like, and that's fine. We understand that. Um, with that said, the, you know, this is still private property. The city doesn't own it. People need to be able to, you know, do what they will with it within a reasonable framework. And the process uh, for doing that in terms of, you know, being able to demolish one of these structures needs to be, it can't be unreasonably uh, costly or lengthy. Um, this is really about achieving the proper balance between those competing values, and I think we're headed in the right direction. Um, at any rate, the couple issues that I wanted to bring up, um, maybe we could come back to... Uh, All right, so um, that's going to kind of cut them off there. Um, I have it written down in the brief where Sam thinks that it, would, it wouldn't make much sense if the owner has to come up with a, a rede redevelopment plan that could become costly only to come to the conclusion that the building should have come down in the first place. Uh, but of course, does this building have an economic benefit or will, will this be a money pit for any future owners of these historic buildings? Um, so that's just kind of like one of those things that um, kind of happened with the old mercantile that the owner, before they sold it to the organization that's building the Hotel Marriott, um, the whole idea is that they've had it for like six, seven years. They stripped it down to its bare bones, and they basically figured out the bare bones are pretty delicate. And of course, if you ever saw any of the footage of when MCAT uh, got a quick little time lapse of the tear down of the mercantile, it came down pretty uh, quickly like a house of cards. Um, in that sense that uh, that the structure itself was kind of not that great but then again there's there are always uh, there are always other options to maybe even restore it, even building a building within <laughs> the um, old mercantile for the structure and just keeping the facade which is a lot of what a lot of people were arguing boom I'm not talking about this anymore because it's not about the mercantile and I know this is uh, basically this whole um, updated ordinance and talking about the reason Basically, this whole meeting was to justify tearing down historic buildings. And you can learn more information about this by going on there as well. But of course, here's uh, Amy Shearer once again and talks about redevelopment policies um, in terms of response. Again, this, this only affects, you know, 65 buildings in this city, and they are our most prized historic resources. So what we're trying to do is redevelop in a way that is sensitive to what was there. Um, and that's the purpose for the redevelopment. And honestly, I've never seen an ordinance that didn't have that, except for our current ordinance right now. So. All right. So uh, basically, there, um, the city of Missoula is going to try to follow in suit uh, in terms of um, other communities that have historic uh, buildings in their community. Um, most likely, Butte is the prime example of what Emmy has always kind of referred to in terms of historic uh, landmarks and historic uh, buildings happening in, in this in, in a town where they have a good uh, percentage of buildings that are historic buildings as well. And other processes that have been done to restore a lot of these buildings as well. So I'm going to kind of leave it there. You can watch this meeting as well. It, it is online. It's the Land Use and Planning Committee meeting. They're going to have a uh, public hearing on July 23rd, but they are going to talk about this again during uh, Land Use and Planning next Wednesday. So you guys can join them and talk a little bit more about historic preservation, about how important it is to keep um, Missoula's um, downtown old aesthetic or if you want to go on there from the other end and be like, tear it all down and let's start anew. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, <laughs> Committee of the Whole is up next. Um, proposed countywide general obligation open space bond is $15 million. So they're asking for basically, uh, in the short of it, they're asking for more money um, for the open space bond. Um, in the case of the 2006 open space bond, the estimated cost is for a $265,000 home per assessed market value by the Department of Revenue is 
dollars and 84 cents per household per year and of course for a 100k home uh but just below the 265,000 is 673 per home and then of course $200,000 home is 13 dollars uh, and 46 cents and this is for your tax which will be on your taxes if you vote on it and the city at uh, this meeting as well they talk a little bit more about the brass tax you can learn more about this and learn about uh so this is gonna be on the future ballot in november so um here's john engen kind of explaining some of the background Before and you, why it's important product of us having uh, long conversations with advocates folks who are passionate about this program in crafting uh a resolution and a financial model that we believe will work extraordinarily well, not only for the city of Missoula, but for Missoula County, and accomplish a wide variety of goals moving forward. Um, we're very pleased with the, 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 the process and the product, and we believe um, with the support of uh, advocates, um, the diligent work that they've done in helping us understand the desire um, and need and support that this measure will have in the community. Um, we can move forward uh, with confidence uh, and a lot of hope for the future. Uh, the resolution uh, before you does a couple of things. One is it uh, provides a formal mechanism for the Missoula City Council to ask uh, the Missoula County Board of Commissioners to <clears throat> place a $15 million open space bond measure on the November ballot for consideration throughout Missoula County. All right, so that was uh, Mayor John Ingen talking uh, about that, kind of giving you a nice little introduction. Um, but that with an introduction, it's always nice to have a little bit of history. Um, um, Greg Tolson, one of the folks who brought the uh, 2006 open space bond to the city and the county um, in the past, talks a little bit about the history of, and importance of open space in the city and uh, city and county of Missoula. The uh, honor in uh, 1994, I believe, when I came before the body to ask for that open space bond, uh, that had this magical effect on the community. It brought the entire community together with one dream, and that was Mount Jumbo and the rest of the uh, open space, uh, uh, key open space features in the valley. And, and that bond uh, has continued to, to uh, serve as a, uh, a place where the community comes together with shared values and shared hopes uh, and and the dollars that have been spent on that have been leveraged and leveraged and leveraged again and uh, and it has been a wonderful thing to watch and be part of it. it's been an honor and uh, and it's something that we need to keep alive in this community all right that was Greg Tolson um, who was the one who kind of helped bring the first bond forward and back in 2006 bonds uh, funds have covered over 9,000 acres in the city of Missoula which are consist of the open space bond many of these are areas protected beyond committees that ex uh, that exist through these bonds so a lot of times these open space one of the deals is that this would be keeping kept open space long after a bunch of the committees that run um, these open space um, bond committees. Basically, they, they're the ones that determine what should be open space, but once they become open space, they cannot be touched unless it has to be like like a huge process to be voted on in the future. The purpose of this bond uh, that the city has learned uh, that uh, learned that providing open space for the citizens, it has allowed access to many of the natural corridors, to wildlife, trails, and more. Many people spoke in favor of continuing this open space space acquisition lands. Brian Von Lossberg uh, um, wants to make it clear on the ballot so people aren't caught off guard in this upcoming November ballot. Making sure that we're advocating for the right question and that speaks to the amount that we're talking about and the combination in this case of uh, the 15 million dollar general obligation bond as well as the, the stewardship levy uh, and I view these two things as um, uh, they will be separate questions if this uh, all passes um, on the ballot but to me they're inseparable and um, they're 
a very responsible uh, proposition for uh, for the voters to consider. And I can't underscore enough. Again, this isn't a decision we're making on whether to to do this or not. We're um, making a decision about whether to support putting a specific question, you know, on the ballot or with the commissioners advising them to put this on the ballot. And then same thing for for the levy. And so it gets back to this issue of is are, are we advocating um, are these the right questions to be put into the people? Uh, and I think if you look, when I look back over the history of uh, the amounts um, that we, this community has supported, uh, our change as a community, our growth as a community, uh, I'm very comfortable. And I think that the, the $15 million amount is a sensible um, amount that allows us uh, to continue doing the work that needs to be done. And that implicit there is the, the idea that there is continued need. And I have no doubt um, from what I've seen uh, all throughout my tenure on council as we have made and approved certain acquisitions and as we have looked to the future uh, that that, that uh, substantive important need uh, remains on the table, so to speak. And this, this amount in the general obligation bond uh, is, is appropriate to that. The, the All right, okay, so I'm just going to uh, stop Brian Von Lossberg right there, and that basically concludes the Community of the Whole. Of course, I'll let you guys decide back um, coming up in November. Uh, of course, this is not on the ballot quite yet. They have to go through the county commissioners, but it seems like it's going it's, it's, it's to be fairly easy just uh, – uh, the cost of the ink that they're going to be putting on the ballot as well. But if you want to watch this meeting and learn more about what's going on in your community and what's going on with this new ballot initiative that's being proposed, this new bond that's being proposed for the city-county uh, joint efforts, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, it is a great resources for everything Missoula. Um, if you're looking for a permit to uh, do anything, um, looking to build something, looking to start something, even be a part, you can always go to How Do I, and you can do apply for jobs, license permits uh, you can apply for a board you can close a side street or sidewalk for any reason but of course if you want to find those meetings and more as you go to your government i'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see a little bit better you go to your government and you go to city council right here and you click on agendas webcast minutes and it is a great resource um, to find all these meetings and more and then currently in session upcoming events you got archive city meetings the community forum looks like it's going to be happening on the 28th which is the uh, ne the most the upcoming meeting of course here's all the items right here and you click on agenda it'll bring you to a nice page where it basically kind of shows you a little bit of meeting. Um, you know, I just have to click on here to start the plugin, but I don't need to start a video for you guys to kind of show an example of how you guys can have access to the city of Missoula's website, um, ci.missoula.mt.us. But before I kick things off over into events, I got a brand new art clip um, featured from, uh, let's see, let's just uh, double check, from the Zach, and this will be running until July 6th. So you have uh, this week, next week, and I believe the week after to check this out. Uh, basically, it'll end on the first Friday in July. So here's an uh, art clip from the Zootown Arts Community Center, and when I come back, I'll talk about events. <laughs>
your local library, igniting the passion for reading. How would you like to have an endless supply of books, movies, music, audiobooks, and even ebooks whenever you want? Your library card can do all that, and it doesn't cost a thing. You can pick up a library card anytime the library is open, free of charge to residents. All you need is a picture ID with your current address. The library will then verify your address, and once they have, your library card will be good for life. Library card holders may borrow several items to enjoy all at once. Be sure to check the return dates as they may vary depending on what items you check out. It's so easy to get access to all the library has to offer. And best of all, it's free. To learn more, stop by your local library or visit their website. This message brought to you by the Greater Montana Foundation and the Montana State Library. Sergeant Greg Amos with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about bicycles riding on the sidewalks in the city of Missoula, which we see a lot because Missoula is a very bike friendly town. I would just like to let bicyclists know that they do have to yield to pedestrians on the sidewalk safely because they travel faster than a pedestrian, so they do have to do that in a safe manner. And then when you get to a crosswalk, you are actually required to slow your bicycle down to what would be called a pedestrian pace, and you cannot begin crossing until it's safe to do so. Your smartphone can help you find a bar, alert your friends that you're in the bar, update you on your team while you're at the bar, and now, let you know you need a ride home from the bar. Hmm, that is smart. Download blood alcohol calculators for your phone at plantolive.mt.gov. Buckle up, Montana. Life is a ride you want to stay on. Send a buckle up reminder to a friend at plantolive.mt.gov. Senior Corps at Missoula Aging Services is Missoula's volunteer hub. Hundreds of volunteer opportunities await. You can help improve reading skills, school attendance, and the well being of students, provide services that help older adults or find out about countless other opportunities that will capture your interest. Because your heart's desire never ages, now is the time to reinvent yourself. Discover your perfect volunteer opportunity by calling 728-7682. Sergeant Greg Gamis with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about something I see downtown routinely, and that is pedestrians crossing against the pedestrian heads. So I'd just like to explain what is actually legal. You cannot begin crossing in the crosswalk when it's either flashing and in the countdown or solid red. The only time it's legal to begin crossing in that crosswalk is when the white crossing sign is displayed. The, what the countdown is for and the only thing that that's there for is to tell you how much time you have to finish crossing the street, presuming that you started when it was legal to do so. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back. Um, let's talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula. Uh, summer camps are starting up at MCAT and has room for time travelers camp where it happens from July 9th through the 13th. And um, it's gonna be a, a, a kind of like a co-sponsored by Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. So if you have a kid aged nine to 13 interested in doing a uh, summer camp about historic Missoula or history itself, Time the Traveler's Camp is the place for you guys. And of course, there are other summer camps happening currently and happening now. Um, Roostock Chris Sports Center is doing a Mission Impossible. They're doing a full day and half days um, uh, today. And these are for kids aged three to 12. And they keep the kids organized based on their age group. So you don't have any like big kids and little kids mixed together. A full day is from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And I believe they do have some aftercare available. Half days are from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, Camp Mo Fun is happening at Mismo Gymnastics starting right now. And this is from um, 8.30 to about 3.30 p.m. This is a, t a week two of uh, Mismo's Camp Mo Fun, and it's about $200 uh, for members and $220 
for non-members. Um, Missoula Quilters Guide to Quilt Show. Um, starting at 10 a.m., Big Sky High School hosts the biannual quilt show featuring over 500 quilts, demos, vendors, silent auctions, boutiques, raffles, and more. Um, Tiny Tales and Storytime are starting at Missoula Public Library at 10.30 a.m. this morning. Um, if you want your kid to uh, get in involved with books and get involved with the bo your local library. It's the perfect time to do it um, and get them exposed to books as early as uh, birth to uh, basically ready for school. Um, free admission at the Missoula Insectarium is happening today. So if you want to learn about bugs and get your uh, kid to learn about bugs, and also they have a couple of classes uh, this weekend as well I'll talk about later on. But the Missoula Insectarium is free of charge to lay to celebrate the third anniversary and they give a huge thank you to the Dennis and Phyllis Washington Foundation for providing this opportunity for our community. Cribbage and Bridge is on at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 1230-ish today. Um, Play some games, fun card games, bridge, cribbage, all that. Bureau of Land Management tip adoption. So happening today and tomorrow at the Missoula Fairgrounds, starting at 1 in the afternoon until about 7 p.m. Uh, during the Bureau of Land Management's Adopt a Wild Horse Program event, wild horses will be showcased on the on the trainability of them and offered for adoption. Trainers will be able to do the clinics and demonstrations. The BLM works to place excess animals into private care through its adoption and sales program, as well as successful partnerships with organizations across the nation. Car wash. Hey, at Les Schwab, they're doing a car wash. It helps to uh, pay for the Montana Volleyball Academy. Um, and it's happening from 2 to about 6.30 p.m. today. And you can uh, clean out your car, and it's a good cause as well. Sleeping Beauty, um, MCT, Missoula Children's Theater, they've been doing camps. They do a bunch of camps all summer long. And this is one of their uh, day camps for a bunch of those little kids who are doing a children's theater. Uh, they're doing a rockin' version of Sleeping Beauty. And if you don't know what Sleeping Beauty is, you should be ashamed of yourself. And it's happening, a show is happening at 4 p.m. and at 6 p.m. But of course, if... You want to do something with your kids? You can go to the Family Friendly Fridays at the Top Hat from six to nine. They have drink specials and all that wonderful jazz. Um, but of course, happening tonight as well uh, for um, Missoula events is live bingo at the Dark Horse. You got pop art yourself with Paint It with a Twist. Uh, Fair airs from the British Isles will be at uh, classical music at First Ch uh, Church of Christ Scientists. <laughs> Dirty Heads, Kettle House Amphitheater will be playing some reggae rock music at the Kettle House Amphitheater this weekend, this tonight. Cash for Junkers is going to be at the Union Club, and that pretty much wraps it wraps up for your Friday. I'm just going to jump into Saturday because I think I gave you enough of those uh, videos that you saw saw on the PSAs as well. So I'm going to skip right into some more events happening for your Saturday. Saturday, Farmer's Market is kicking off um, from 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, happens every single Saturday. You can't miss it. I haven't missed uh, too many of them. Um, Salmon River Without Retreat at 9 a.m. at the University of Montana. William uh, Debye's Pulitzer finalist and an undisputed master of crafts of nonfiction will lead this remarkable six-day writing workshop in the main Salmon River through the heart of Idaho's Frank Church Wilderness. This 90-mile wilderness river uh, trip boasts big sandy beaches, excited rapids, charismatic bighorn sheep, Native American pictographs, and natural hot springs. There is no prerequisite of publication or formal writing education. University students may earn two undergraduate or graduate credits for this course. So this is a six-day writing workshop on the river. So um, make, sh make sure you uh, pack plenty of plastic bags for this as well. Spectrum is doing engineering starting at 11 a.m. and they always have some kind of activity in the makerspace as well. And um, mastering Marks, summer art class for adults and teens at the Missoula Art Museum, is participates uh, will learn the basics of landscape drawing and venturing into Missoula's lovely outdoor hotspots such as Greeno Park and Hellgate Canyon. If the class is more adventurous, drawing tips can be taken out Taken to other settings, some of the stretch, the idea of landscape, such as the railroad yard and Old Frenchtown Mill, regardless of where the drawing actually happens, you'll be versed in a variety of drawing techniques using graphite, charcoal, ink, and um, crayons in order to create stunning naturalistic and abstract depictions of our fantastic natural and not-so-natural surroundings. And this is happening Saturdays on the, basically, uh, 
today might be the last ones. They had it two Saturdays. They had it last Saturday, and they're going to do it again this Saturday. And this is from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. It's $80 for non-members. But if you're a member and you want to support the arts, um, you can always join a membership at the Missouri Art Museum, and it helps support free art for everybody else. So $72 for members. Um, and that's kind of what's happening with that. There's a lot of ha things happening on Saturday, so I'm going to try to get through it as fast as possible. Think outside. Cornhole Tournament Fundraiser. This summer um, is the first, first annual <laughs> cornhole tournament. You never use first annual because annual implies more than one year. But anyways, cornhole tournament during this event. They will hope to raise money to fund purchase kayaks and life vests for all of the happy campers. Their tournament will be taking place Saturday, June 23rd, tomorrow. This event will consist of 20 holes and up to 50 teams can participate in double animation bracket tournament. The cost per team will be $25 and they will have, to have participants from all over the state and surrounding areas. It will be all day event with raffle drawings, food and beverage options, burgers, brats, beers, all that stuff. Um, it's going to be at the... Um, Millican property starting at 10 a.m. for a cornhole competition. Trekker kids at Traveler's Rest, the buzz on pollinators. Traveler's Rest State Park um, is a program which occurs outdoors, so be wearing um, uh, comfortable shoes and dress for the weather. Um, this event is part of the Trucker Kids, a series of activities programs geared towards kids ages 5 to 12 years of age and their families, occurring the fourth Saturday of every month to celebrate the rich culture and natural history of Western Montana at Traveler's Rests. Programs are free, though donations are greatly appreciated. Uh, bugs and fly fishing at Missoula Insectarium, like I said, uh, starting at noon, and they have a predator feed at 1 p.m., so you want, might want to check out this um, fly fishing at Missoula Insectarium. So they basically kind of teach you about why um, fish like those uh, tasty bugs when you go fly fishing, and it's a good way to get your kid interested in fly fishing, especially if you've moved up, moved up to the state of Montana and Missoula area to do some fly fishing in the first place. The third annual Sportsman Against Breast Cancer Boutique is starting at uh, Linda Vista Golf Course tomorrow at 5 p.m. The third annual Sportsman Against uh, Boutique will be a bit of a moment where Montana sportsmen can come together to help families fight cancer. And also, on Sunday, there's the Maid Fair from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Karis Park. They usually have a car show there, too, as well. And Sunday is looking to be a very beautiful day as well. And if you guys are planning on going out Saturday night, here are some of the events that are happening for your Saturday night. It's the 50th anniversary of Dances of Universal Peace. It's going to be at Har Shalom at 4 p.m. Cynthia Brando is going to be at the Draftworks Brewing Company. Symphony uh, Soray is going to be at the Wilma. Uh, Faith... Uh, Adledge and Connor Radicote is going to be some jazz music happening at the Rumor Restaurant, which is the new restaurant which replaced the uh, Elbow Room, just so you guys know. Um, Crossroads, it's off of Stevens. So Crossroads is going to be at Imagination Brewing Company. It's going to be acoustic folk music. And it looks like sir, um, those are some of your uh, events happening as well. Sorry. I just kind of told you what happened on Sunday because I noticed that they were kind of happening earlier. But Misty Falls is going to be at Painting with a Twist. It's going to be cl art class. A Narconics Anonymous meeting at the University of Montana, 815. Uh, Black Milk with Nat Turner is going to be hip hop at the Top Hat Lounge. And Absolutely Chris with Chris Moon is going to be at the Badlander. And if you want some live music, Joan Zen will be playing at the Union Club this Saturday. So those are some of your events that are happening as well. If you want to learn more about your Missoula events, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's happening in Missoula? This is what's happening in Missoula. Go to MissoulaEvents.net. And also that you can always look at the Independent, the Missoulian. There's always a bunch of events happening as well. Um, but that pretty much does it for what I needed to say. Um, not that many announcements for MCAT. We do have orientation every Wednesday at 530. Um, and also, MCAT a lot of times will be closed to the public during our summer camps next week. So from 12 to 5, or basically um, we'll, we'll, a lot of this is by appointment only, so you'll have to call in. So if you want to schedule a time to edit or do any uh, programs uh, for MCAT, on MCAT, um, you can schedule time between 5 and 8 p.m., Tuesday through Friday next week. And then, of course, we'll be back for a regular scheduled uh, pub public producing hours on July 3rd um, through the 6th, which is the week before our uh, basically our heavy camp weeks, which will be happening congruently every single week in July after the fact. So 
I think that's pretty much it for everything. I do have a special treat for you guys. I, I made a song through GarageBand, and um, I'm going to play it for you guys. How about that? So without further ado, here is some cool music.